Thank you so much. Is it working? Yes. Well, I was already introduced, but pretty much I'm Mateus Santana, a content creator from Brazil that moved to the Netherlands a few years ago. And some of you may know me for my little videos where I'm always high pitch, which that explains my voice right now. And I'm always like saying things, living in the Netherlands or Dutch news or living in the Netherlands be like. And some of you think that this is nice and some of you think that this is not nice. But if you think that this is not nice, then you have no taste. <laughs> Um, pretty much what I want to do today is giving you three tips on how to be a better content creator. This was my journey, but yeah, we all have different journeys and I probably didn't know much about it until I was here. And yeah, look at me now. This is amazing. I have all of you. <laughs> the first tip that I want to give is turn your traumas into creativity. Because like 9.14 in the morning, we should talk about traumas, right? Uh, this was me here as a kid, and I had a, a pretty common, pretty normal family. I had a father that was amazing, was always at home, a mother that was also amazing and always at home. I had a brother, uh, now, not that nice, I don't, I don't talk with my brother that much. I had a sister that was also amazing, and yeah, my parents were always at home, but at some times they would not really be like there for me because somehow my brother had a kid when he was 17. And then when I was like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to live this life. Then I had my sister that was so amazing and she would be bringing me to the cinema, bringing me to the theater, bringing me to do amazing and interesting things. Because my parents always thought, oh, art or like doing, playing the piano or learning something new is not really something that you should do. You should actually study mathematics. You should do something that actually gives you a future. But then my sister was like, no, Let's just do nice things. Let's explore different things. And thanks to her, I was really blessed to actually like discover that I love music. I love like listening to different artists. And this was not my path. I, I'm really a horrible uh, musician, but I discovered that I love talking and I'm happy about it. You can pass to the next one. When I was 12, my sister moved to Belgium. Uh, and it was really hard because she was like this person that would bring me to places. And I was like, okay, now I have to explore my creativity by myself. And I had the internet because that's how you start meeting new people, right? That's how you are connecting and discover the things that you love to do. I had, my family had this little camera that I feel like every Brazilian or a group of Brazilians had that Sony cyber shot. And this is like peak of my teenager years. I would go to like friends' events and then be the photographer and they would be like, oh my God, send me these pictures. And that would take a week to send because you don't want to spoil the pictures, right? I, you want to make them wait. <laughs> and yeah, I was, I was there doing these pictures and I was like, maybe I would like to be a photographer. Maybe music is not really for me because like I said, my parents never really bring me to play piano or do a hip hop dance or anything. They were pretty much focused on study, otherwise you're not gonna have any, any future in life. Very Latino background, I would say. And then, okay, I was like, I love life taking pictures, but I, 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 I'm just not doing this correctly. So let me just give up on this hobby. I started, I painted all my wall at the home black of my, bedroom and I started like writing very sad songs and I was like oh my god my life is so hard and I was a teenager nothing was really hard but I just did it. I'm dramatic I'm just dramatic and I was there living a normal day I just woke up my mom comes to home and says I went to a witch and she told me three things first you're gay and I was like Oh, okay, that's my coming out. I have to come out right now. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I have to come out to my mom. I kind of did it. Then second thing, she said, you are moving to Europe. And I was like, how? Like with the background, with the trauma that you just gave me, like that I told you the whole thing, I don't think this is happening. And then third, she told me, you are going to be very successful. I was like, okay, I'm going right now. There's no way that this is happening. I didn't believe a single word that my mom said. I had to come out, and this was my coming out. 
And I was in a long distance relationship with someone in Europe. And then I was applying to all these scholarships because, yeah, I was studying tourism. And tourism was never really something that connected with me because, yeah, I was learning about hotels, how to clean hotels, how to organize hotels. And I don't even know how to organize my room. As you can see over in the other slide over there, that was not organized, so not for me. And then I, I applied to some scholarship here. And then I saw like only 15 people get this scholarship. And I was like, no, this is never going to be me. I'm going to try it. And I saw that I had to write a motivational letter. And like back in the days, we used to write our motivational letters. Now we use ChatGPT. But that was very hard, actually. And then I just sent it. And then I got a scholarship. But I was like, how am I supposed to tell my parents? I was, I was like, just don't tell your parents. Like, one week before I moved, I told my mom and my dad, I'm moving to the Netherlands in a week. <laughs> because, yeah, I just don't like talking about things. I just feel shy. <laughs> and moved to Europe, started a brand new life. And that goes to my second tip for you. You don't need much to start. Just do it. Because, yeah, I was, I was here basically uh, taking some pictures because I went back to this hobby of taking pictures. Did I have a camera? Not really. But I, I always loved taking pictures. And I had an iPhone 7, which is enough for being a photographer, right? Uh, it was enough for me back in the days. But yeah, I would, I would go further on this. I was here, and I, I started posting pictures every single day. And I was like, I'm from Brazil. I'm living in the Netherlands. People are going to be like, this is amazing. You are a model. You should like follow. Like, and, I, and then I went to like, some website called Model Management. And I'd be like, OK, I'm going to send these pictures. And perhaps they're going to be the new model. But look at me. I don't think I have the height for a a model, or look like a model, or anything related to a model. I tried. At least I tried. And yeah. I kept on going. I was here for a whole year, and I was studying Utrecht. It's a city that I really never managed to connect with people there. So I was like, oh my god, I don't think I like this country. I don't think I belong here as well. And I had this whole philosophical thing that I don't belong in Brazil. I don't belong in the Netherlands. The place that I feel at home is like the internet, because I thought, like, oh, I meet these people, and I can do these things. But I would never be happy here. But you just don't need much. You just have to start somewhere. So I kept on searching for things. You can pass to the next slide. Uh, and then I started making YouTube videos. You don't have to press yet. And I was also posting YouTube videos once a week. And I was so persistent that I had like Dutch subtitles. I had Portuguese subtitles because I was like, I'm doing this video in English, but I had my, my fans in Brazil, like <laughs> the five people that knew me, <laughs> that would want me to translate in Portuguese because they don't know English. But then I was like, my boyfriend got a Dutch family. I should translate in Dutch for them as well. So then this was hell for my relationship because I was basically like, you have to translate my videos. And he's like, but like only 50 people are watching these videos. <laughs> but I was like, but it matters to me. And it mattered to me. And I, I was like, I don't think I'm going to be the new YouTube star sensation that I thought I was going to be. I don't think being a Brazilian in the Netherlands is something that people want to watch. And then I started making very sad and philosophical videos where I was like playing in the snow and thinking that I was someone else. And that's, that's the crap result of it. You can see now. Oh, it's not playing. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, like, think about this video of me like saying, this is the first time I see the snow, and I don't know what I'm doing with my life. And the snow falls in my hands, and I don't know. I'm here, but I miss Brazil, but how am I supposed to do with this life? Yeah, like, who wants to watch this? <laughs> I thought my depression would be inspired for people, but apparently not. <laughs> and uh, my editing skills were not there as well. I just had discovered a reverse thing uh, on, I don't know, Final Cut Pro, and I was like, everyone's going to eat this up. No one ate. <laughs> yeah, you can go next. But like I said, you don't need much. You just have to start somewhere. You love something. You have the passion. Just show that, that you have the passion. I, I started going there, taking pictures of some friends. And then I was 
again, still feeling pretty lonely in my first year. So I, I was searching on Facebook, which who searches things on Facebook nowadays? This was like seven years ago, so it makes sense. I searched like LGBTQ plus I love uh, in Rotterdam, in the Netherlands. Then I searched queers in Rotterdam, queers in the Netherlands. I searched any like, thing that would be from my niche, which my mom, my mom they just told me that, that everyone that I'm gay, so you guys know of that by now. <laughs> and I found this, this group with students from Erasmus University in the Netherlands that were actually uh, queer. And I was like, I'm not a student from the Erasmus, but I hope that they let me go to this drink. And I went there as like a person that they didn't even study at the university there. And I arrived at the drink and I was like, hey, my name is Mateusz. I'm from Brazil. I do like these YouTube videos that you should check later. And they checked and they were like, oh my God, maybe you should not talk with this guy. <laughs> so they did not, they were pretty fun. I, I went there and then I made so many friends and I was like, maybe there's hope. Like I can connect with people. I can love this country. And I started like little by little, enjoy more, feel more at home. And I, I, I started being a social media manager for the, the, like the Erasmus University queer group, very niche of the niche of the niche. And yeah, I, I started or, uh, like working on their social media, trying to improve it, trying to show how fun it was. And that was a little bit of the beginning of my career as a social media manager. I mean, if you can call that. <laughs> I, I was pretty much taking pictures of the students and then we were like, writing their stories without ChatGPT because we didn't have it back in the days, like I said. And then I was like, okay, more and more people are actually connecting with me. They are enjoying what I do. And I started feeling like, maybe you are good at it because I was only doing this with my phone again, with an iPhone 7. And I got the first invitation to actually go to an event and take pictures there. And I was like, but how am I supposed to do this? I don't have a camera. I don't, I, I cannot really go in this event without a camera. And I went there with my little phone and started taking pictures in this event with my phone and I was just so embarrassed. I was like, everyone's looking at me and thinking, why is this boy in this event taking pictures with a phone? But I did it anyways, because again, you don't need much. You just have to start somewhere. You just have to do it. I walked there, took these pictures, got my 50 euro of, that they pay me like a lot. And then like half advanced, someone gave me a camera and then I started taking pictures of people with the camera and I was like, I don't know how to use this even. Like, where should I press? How should I focus? But it worked. The, the pictures were horrible, but and I, I, I deleted all of them. No one ever gonna see it, but you would have to start somewhere. And this was my start. After that, I, I opened my own company called Santana's Eyes which by seeing that everyone's here, we are all freelancers here, right? Because Friday morning, like no one, it's, everyone's in the office except for all of you and me. <laughs> but yeah, I, I opened my own company and I was pretty much beginning the end of my studies. And I was like, okay, the pandemic started. I, started, I ended my study 20, 2020 in February. And I was like, okay, how am I supposed to find a full-time job? I don't think there's, there's full-time jobs available in the market. I don't think you can find it. For a second thing, I was not studying Dutch because did I have money to, to study Dutch? No, I got a scholarship. Like, I was barely paying the train. Like, how can I pay to learn a language? So I stayed this entire year just like focusing on my projects, taking pictures. And yeah, you were over there and you were over here as well. Yeah, she was in one of the pictures in one of my projects. And little by little, I started having some projects with like a place called Dona Dare with the Remeta Rotterdam as well. And I applied for my first little help to like start a project. And then I did this project in the pandemic with Miriam that is over there. And I was taking pictures of 10 different people that were also struggling during the pandemic because uh, if I was passing through this, then people were also doing this. And then, I took these pictures where people were holding a little glass and they were telling how hard it was in the pandemic. And this was the first time that I actually did something with my camera and that I was actually evolving as a professional. But I don't think it was that different from when I had my little phone and I was doing things by the way I could at the time because sometimes you just have to start. And that was my start. 2022 which goes to the third part, 
it comes consistency because I was already pretty consistent before, right? I was pretty much posting pictures every day. I was posting YouTube videos every week. And I was doing in Dutch, in English, in every single language. No one was, but it still landed me few jobs, opportunities. But 2022 was 21 was a little bit crazier because I was with actually with Louisa is right here, with Katya that is over there, and a few few other friends. And Louise came and said, "I have the best idea, you guys. You guys need to hear that right now." I was in my company meeting and we met this guy that knows everything about TikTok and he told me like, you have to do this, you have to post at least one video a day. If you can do three, even better. But if, you're not, if you cannot, then just do one. And you have to use three hashtags. This is the amount of words that you should use in the caption. And I was like, what, what, what are you saying? Like, I try every little format of things, I try. Instagram, I tried YouTube and nothing was really working. Like, why is he thinking that now, after, uh, like in the middle of a pandemic, first of all, things will be different? Somehow he thought about it and I was like, okay, I don't know how to do it. And him and another friend gave me a ring light. <laughs> and that's why this ugly ring light is here. Because, because they were like, okay, you have to do it. And then, because they gave me a ring light, I did it. Otherwise, I wouldn't do anything. <laughs> So the power of ring light, it can fake, fake your imperfections. It can help you recording videos. It can do you many things in your life. No, I'm not selling ring lights today, but maybe I will in the future, you never know. Uh, and then we all, this group of friends of five people, start posting videos every day. And then two weeks later, I was the only one posting videos. They all gave up on it. Uh, but I was, there, I was there, and then I had my first viral video, I think one week after I started. And then I was like, oh my God, I'm finally the sensation that I always thought I was going to be. Uh, excuse me? Like, I have five comments before I had zero. <laughs> and I was, I was there seeing that, like, finally people liked what I was... I have an alarm right now. It's gone. Finally, people were enjoying what I was doing. Then I, the first video was called Random Things That Happen in the Netherlands. And I was talking about, like, people biking with no hands. And then I was like, I did so many things. I did vlogs, I did pictures, and the people are gonna be enjoying my video where I talk about someone biking without hands, like, not even like my face in it that much. I, was, I thought I was a model, okay? And yeah, I, I did, okay, random things that happened in the Netherlands part two, flop. And I was like, I thought people would love me, now that I have 100 views again. But I was like, no, you are not gonna give up, you're gonna continue, you're gonna post every single day. And then I went, random things part three, random things part four, food that I like, food that I don't like. And I kept on trying different things regarding the niche that, I, that chose me, because you don't choose your niche, the ch your niche is gonna choose you. <laughs> and somehow, I think I manifested being the Brazilian in the Netherlands, because I moved here, first of all, and second, I always try to talk about my experiences here. And after, I think five or six, no, five years of living here, it, it finally happened. People started liking what I was doing. And that's all thanks to consistency. Because if you don't do it, you're never going to actually be able to connect with anyone. And back in the days, I would be like, oh my god, not that many people are watching or, or caring about it. But somehow, these little opportunities and these little videos made me actually get this opportunity that landed to this opportunity that made me meet these people and in the end, it worked, and it worked for you, too, I'm 100% sure. Uh, I remember that first weeks that I was doing Instagram, I took this screenshot where I had 4,000 people reach in my profile, and I was like, look at me, I have 4,000 people watching me. I have, like, probably there's a village in the Netherlands with 4,000 people. The entire <laughs> village is, loves me. I'm like, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna even be able to walk there. That's what, but then, I was like, let me screenshot every single progress. Now I have 2,000 followers. I'm, I'm there. And it's so crazy to think that now, last month I had 4 million people that I reached only on my Instagram. And I probably had like over 150 million people that watch my videos. And to think about the little boy in Brazil that had a really broken family and completely unstructured and never thought that he would be able to manage to get anything to arrive here, 
struggle and not be able to actually understand what I was doing to actually have, first of all, all of you here listening to the crazy things I say, and second, uh, an audience that actually cares. I heard things like, I moved to the Netherlands because I saw your video and it was really helpful to me, or I was feeling super sad and I watched your videos and that made me a little bit happier. And it's super cliche to say like, oh, I don't care about the numbers. I, just because I received these messages, I feel the happiest. But look, it's true because some days I feel so down, so sad, and I just open my messages and I'm like, okay, someone sent me a really positive thing. That's the moment that I feel happy again. I do receive a lot of hate, <laughs> but fuck the haters. Like, you are doing this because of you. You love what you do. If you start a YouTube channel, you start an Instagram account, there's five people watching your content, you like to do beauty. Doesn't matter. Like, you are there because you are there and you like that. And if there will be people in the future saying that you shouldn't be here, that you don't belong, that this is not your country, doesn't really matter because you do you, and you always do you. Uh, I want to conclude this with the, the quote again, a native, a person that is born in a specific place or associated with a place of birth. Uh, yeah, I, for a very long time, didn't feel native from Brazil. I didn't feel native from the Netherlands. I didn't feel native from anywhere. But little by little, with my experiences, like, like I said before, with turning your traumas into creativity with, oh, second is here. You don't need uh, much to start, just do it. With consistency. That made me native of myself, native of who I am and the little experiences that I actually gather in my life. I hope you guys enjoyed what I said. I was hella nervous, but I managed. And you can manage too. <laughs>